Hello and welcome back to JHEP's version of water, which is on um, biology and chemistry. We're going to incorporate both of them from chemistry unit one and biology unit two. So what makes water so special? Why do we have it everywhere? <laughs> well, it's because there's so many things that we can do with water and it's got such special properties. But first of all, let's have a look at how it's drawn. So to draw it, what we will do is that we know that um, water has got oxygen, hydrogen, and another hydrogen atom. We know that if you do chemistry, you'd know that this is a term, this is 104.5 degrees. The angle between those two bonds are 104.5 degrees. And that is because there are two lone pairs um, which are on the oxygen, um, oxygen atom. You do not need to know that if you do not do chemistry. Okay, it was just a little chemistry bit for you. So we've got that and we've got another water molecule. Now the thing is with water is that it's actually, um, it's actually a dipolar molecule. Yep. So that means that oxygen, well dipolar means two poles, you know, opposite poles, dipoles, two poles. So this oxygen one is slightly negative because there are more electrons around the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atoms. If you do chemistry, you'd understand that, but you don't need to know that for biology. Um, in the hydrogen parts, that is slightly positive because the electrons are drawn more to the oxygen, so therefore that is um, more negative than hydrogen. So what happens is that, wait for it, we've got another oxygen atom, and since it's got a lone pair, since it's got lone pairs, these this hydrogen wants to join in with, well, it wants to join to this oxygen atom. So therefore, we've got this hydrogen bonding that happens, and this should be a straight line, by the way, I didn't really draw it straight. Okay, so we've got H, H. Yeah, so therefore, this needs to be a straight line and this is a hydrogen bond because the hydrogen is, a, um, is joining itself to one of the lone pairs in this um, water molecule, in the oxygen. Okay, so we know that um, oxygen, uh, oxygen, water molecules like to join in with other water molecules and that makes it have this cohesive property. This cohesive property is that the water tends to join with other water molecules. And, surprisingly enough, they like to join in with other materials as well. For example, we've got adhesive properties. So if you've got, um, I don't know, condensation, let's just say condensation on, on the glass window. So we've got um, water forming on the glass windows. They tend to stick with that glass basically even though they drop down because of gravity it still sticks to the grot it still joins the glass and that is because it has got well it's, it's just basically because of the lone pairs and the slightly positive and negatively charged um, dipoles and uh, through capillary action, it also tends to crawl up tubular spaces. So if you put a straw in water, in like a tube of water, you'd notice that the water actually moves up it. It actually has this, um, not meniscus, uh, no, it's, it's more of a concave shape, where it looks like the water are actually crawling up the sides of the straw. And this is particularly important when it comes to um, when it comes to the xylem. Um, if you'd notice back in Unit One Biology, um, you'd notice that water crawls up it, and because of these cohesive adhesive and the capillary action, that's how water moves from the root towards um, to the well to the leaf, and also you've got root pressure and all of that. And capillary action is also limited to gravity as well, so so it can't. 
It can't go all the way up the straw just by itself. The thing is with ice, if you think about the North Pole and such like, the reason why the ice floats on top of the water is because ice is less dense than water. When it's at zero degrees or lower, it forms a tetrahedral structure with other water molecules. So therefore, we've got this open lattice of, um, of this ice. And as you can see, it's very, very spacious. And when you heat up this, uh, when you heat up this ice, basically some of the hydrogen bonds break and therefore more water molecules are squashed more water molecules are squashed and therefore it's more dense the water is more dense and then we've got something along the lines of this remember 104.5 degrees so that's why it can float on top of the water surface tension is also a good thing as well sometimes when you're doing the belly flop in uh, in a swimming pool it actually feels like you're hitting a brick wall before you actually well move uh, and drown if you are not careful. Small animals and small living organisms can float on this, on the water, because of this strong cohesion, this surface tension at the top of the water. Um, because of these hydrogen bondings between the, um, the molecules and such like, it forms this stiff upper layer which requires a lot of energy to break apart. So that's why, um, that's why when you slap water, it kind of hurts. You know, so if this bee just decides to bzzz and go all the way down onto the water, it will not be able to have the amount of energy required to break these bonds, and therefore it just floats on top of the water. Water is also a solvent. Anything polar can dissolve in this molecule, in this, in all of this molecule. So, for example, if you have sodium chloride which um well which is salt so if you have sodium which is na plus and chlorine which is cl minus okay this is not drawn to scale by the way if they're joined together through ionic bonding the thing is with water that it would actually separate the sodium chloride to produce these two separate ions and therefore we've got um and therefore it fits between all these water molecules and therefore it seems like this um, salt or this sodium chloride has disappeared. This is because it's separated and, well, it's, it's been fitted in, basically. And anything non-polar can't dissolve. So if we have, for example, um, uh, sand. Sand is not polar, so therefore it can't dissolve in this water. It's also got a heat a specific heat capacity and that basically means that a lot of energy is actually needed to break these hydrogen bonds it may not seem that much to go from zero degrees to one degrees but if you think about it if you go up all the way to 100 degrees we still need to break these hydrogen bonds for it to become a gas so therefore Although it's got a relatively low specific heat capacity compared to such things as metals and some plastics which go above 100 degrees, it still needs a lot of energy to break these hydrogen bonds between the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen atoms. And last but not least, well we've got latent heat and that basically means that when you're sweating and you're all hot and bothered and or, or whatever or if you're in the sauna for any chance you get all this sweat on your arm and on your armpits like her for example and basically what happens is that the water in that um which is on your skin draws up energy from from your skin from this heat source from this from this source it's like a vampire it sucks up the heat energy for it to evaporate remember it needs energy to break the hydrogen bonds in order for it to evaporate so therefore that's why if if you if if you go to the gym and then you don't bath and then you just lick your arm it would seem that it's actually quite salty that's, that's just a little thing to leave you on. But that's basically it for um, 
for water. And thank you for watching.